This is the third part of today's session on imaging and lesions and after we've talked about the bold signal and fMRI, we will now go into more detail about fMRI and first look at data pre-processing, a very important, um, very important steps in the processing of MRI data. So once we've collected all the fMRI data, we need to do these three steps, head motion correction, spatial normalization and spatial smoothing. Head motion correction is necessary because, as you can see here, um, we might have um, a large change in position of the participant or their brain during um, a session in the scanner. So here you can see that if we're measuring at the same point, the same voxel here, one time it's even not inside the brain anymore because the participant has changed position. Even if it was in the brain, we of course want to make sure we're measuring from the same um, position in the brain because otherwise the data across trials would not be comparable. So head motion is actually the largest source of variance in fMRI data. And head motion can increase false negatives due to noisy data. We find might also find spurious activations due to systematic head motion. So that means if the head moves in relation to the task, for example, imagine a task where you're looking at spiders and you may, might startle every time you see one, then even though there might not be any specific activity in one brain region, just because you move the head, there might be um, an indication of such activity because you're systematically moving the head um, in relation to the task. Here you can see how the X, Y and Z coordinates of a, of a brain, of a person's head, changes across time. So the head motion correction is done during data analysis. But of course, it is important to minimize head motion initially in the first place, namely during data collection. Because even though we can control for some movement and correct it, um, it is always better to get clean data in the first place. So one way to do this would be to limit the subject head movement with padding. So a participant should be as comfortable as possible and then lie in a position that is um, restricting their um, possibilities of moving around at the same time. And furthermore, it is important to highlight to the participants how um, you know, important it is to not move their head, give explicit instructions to lie as still as possible. And of course, it also helps to keep the scan uh, time short because the less time they are in the scanner, the less, might, the less they might feel like moving around. The spatial or stereotactic normalization refers to the process of mapping each individual brain onto a standard reference brain. So just like any other body parts, there are considerable individual differences in the brain size and shape. So um, it's not just that hands look differently or legs or shoulders, but also the brain looks very different from participant to participant. So how do we align, um, how do we align these brains? Um, so what we can do is we can map, for example, here you have subject one, two and three. We can map these onto what we call the standard brain, which is um, in this case, this is an a template based on, on an average of 305 brains. So um, cor finding corresponding points in um, your subject's brain and in the standard brain and then morphing the image accordingly helps you to get standardized um, a standardized image for each participant. Spatial smoothing refers to redistributing brain activity from neighboring voxels to enhance the signal to noise ratio. So that basically is some kind of filter you're applying. And by blurring the data, 
you reduce the high frequency noise while retaining a signal. What that means is that if we're interested, for example, at this point here, we're actually averaging across all these voxels here in a weighted way. So, for example, measuring this voxel here, we take the activity at the voxel here, and this activity at the neighboring voxel might still uh, have some effect on the average, but the further away a voxel is, the less it is taken into account for the average activity of the voxel here. So even though that we lose some spatial precision here, this allows us to reduce the noise because there might be a spurious activity here or here or here and by averaging across a couple of voxels we um, take into account such high spatial frequency noise. So to summarize what we need to do first is head motion correction make sure the voxel, voxels correspond throughout a session. So throughout the session, each voxel should correspond to the same exact spot in the brain. And um, we do this by moving images to a common coordinate system. The spatial normalization refers to making sure that individuals can be compared. So we map them to a standard brain. And the spatial smoothing means that we redistribute the brain activity from neighboring voxels in some kind of filtering way to enhance the signal to noise ratio. So much about the data pre-processing. Next we will look at the uh, reverse inference and also at the connectivity.